State your names for the record. Uh, Sade Caillou Ashampong. I'll say Ashampong. All right. And what are we doing on this case today? Uh, Your Honor, you had scheduled this for just a review uh, to be brought up to date, I imagine, on what the happened. payment plans, yes. yes. So, how is it going? Um, to date, they've paid. All right. And so, how much left? How much is left owing on this? $2,660.12. So, at $500 a month, it's going to be. Oh, go ahead. And I also have like an additional 500 monthly um, prior, when we had our case in our final judgment, I believe was that was. What she's saying is we were on the case together. Uh, so when we came to court the last time you had uh, dismissed my garnishment, uh, my wife's garnishment didn't go through. So hers continued when we put the paperwork in. Uh, he made it as another case, so she's still being garnished. Well, it's one hundred and fifty dollars, so I get paid. It's uh, additional to the five hundred that we had already agreed to. Um, so we're trying to figure out why and if we can stop that garnishment because we're already splitting a payment of two fifty because we're on the same case for five hundred dollars. So right now, he additional he gets five hundred, which was the case that was judgment and then i pay an additional 150 so a total of okay 650. so hold on a second ma'am you pay that additional 150 yep how 75 dollars is taken out of my check every two weeks got it mr mack you know anything about that yes your honor the defendants have actually misstated the facts <laughs> there are two <laughs> judgments baseball judgments. so they are equally liable so, Mr. Acumenopal. Hold on, no, 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 no. So, how? Because we're on the same case, sir. He's sir, I didn't the... ask you to state anything to me. So, Mr. Mack, these parties agreed they were going to pay $500 a month. No, that... no, 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 they did not. Oh, I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at it on September 1st of 2023. You were present in my court. Yes. Defendants to pay $500 per month. Defendants. Defendants. Okay. And so what, what I'm saying is the judgment against Mr. Acky Megaphone was ordered by the $500 a month. At the time, there was no garnishment against Mrs. Acky Megaphone. That's why we sued them both individually and several. So, hold on. When did the garnishment happen? The, the garnishment happened through the Ypsilanti uh, schools. The garnishment was, was no. When was that order? When was when did you request a garnishment? Where's Ann? Okay. First of all. With all due respect to the court, the court ordered me to prepare an order of garnishment concerning this year on And the order to the circuit as of September 15, 2023, and no later than the 15th of the succeeding months, the then then also in the palm is to tender $500 per month of funding. And then, so, all right. No, 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 no. No. You can play those technicalities all you want with me, but here's the reality of it. The motion and affidavit for installment payment plans was filed in both of these defendants' names. Out of that motion for payment plan, I suspended garnishments because I would have to do that when I order the payment plan. If the order is incorrect, then I'm vacating that order. I've got both right here. Both what? Separate names, separate, separate garnishments. Right here. Right here. Show them this. Their motion and affidavit for payment plans. At the top, both names. It is, in fact, once I ordered it, illegal for you to garnish either one of their checks when I've suspended it. I'm going by what the court has ordered the garnishment. 
You asked me a question. Okay. If you're saying, give me that file back. And Mr. Mack, we're going to make it right. Today. All garnishments. Are here by order to spend it. As to both defendants, defendants, plural, shall pay $500 per month as previously ordered. Your Honor, there's something else I'd like to bring to the court's attention. Your colleague, Judge Barr, issued an order stating that Mrs. Angamendapong would pay $150. I don't know if that's been vacated. That's that's not what was ordered on this case. If you want to bring that up before Judge Barrow and he wants to discuss it with me as to which order will hold, you can. But I will tell you in this case that these funds are coming from. It is five hundred dollars per month, as I've indicated. Any garnishment that has been issued is hereby ordered by this court suspended. Counsel for the plaintiff will prepare that order and have it on my desk by Monday morning. Thank you. Thank you. We'll date of the uh, 15th. Are we finished? Well, the date of the 15th that you had ordered. And the date of the 15th of what? The payment? There would be a payment 15th of each month, as it's previously ordered, but only $500. Okay. As, to, as, to, as to both, both of them. Combined. So, and I, I want to get this clear. And there's nothing. I think I'm very clear. Okay. Well, these two will pay five hundred dollars per month, Mr. Mack. That's it. Okay. There'll be no other garnishments of any personal wages or anything along those lines. Those are all suspended. Okay. You will prepare an order to that effect. My desk Monday morning. All I'm talking about is the mailing of it because of the issue. Okay. So, um, these folks, they pay for have some kind of expedited mailing, and they, they, they keep doing that. But I'm saying, as an officer of the court, in fairness to them, if, well, what you now want to be fair to them? Well, seriously, well, he set up an agreement where we could drop something off. Well, not he told us that we could not drop it off at his office yes. and that he designated a specific place yes. and so. someone else to give it to. So, so therefore I start and it was only once where I did certify mail yes. for it on the 15th yes. to be yes. sent to him. Yes. And, and they can keep doing that. They, they can well keep doing that. It, but, it, it but, costs more money to do that. The reason that we said we could drop it off on the 15th oh, is because we don't mm -hmm. get it until the 15th. Yeah. So we wanted to drop the money orders off as soon as we get them. But he's not allowing mm -hmm. us to do that. Well, it isn't that. It's just about dropping it off. But, but, you well, know, he instructed us. Uh, you know, no, here's what we're going to do. Your $500 per month. You need to have it in cash, defendants to pay monthly payments on the 15th of each month into court escrow. Okay. So you just bring it here, the $500. I don't know what their problem with taking your money. We'll be more than happy to take your money. Thank you. That's fine. All this is done for their convenience. That's fine. I'm done, Mr. Mack. Have a good weekend. Thank you, sir. Same Your Honor. Hello. Uh, what's your name? Isa Kelly. All right. What's owing? What's plaintiff's claim? Uh, the amount owing, uh, including late charge for the month of January, is thirty-five hundred and seventy-four dollars. Uh, she is not under a. Uh, she's a current month to month tenant. Her portion. Of the uh, rent is, uh, excuse me, seven ninety seven a month. She owes three months of that. Uh, we haven't received the housing payment of four forty one yet, uh, although they do usually pay on the fourth or the fifth, as imposed yet. So we're asking for the purposes of the hearing today twenty three ninety one, uh, three hundred dollars in month to month fee. 
two hundred and twenty five dollars. That for three months. What? Yeah. Three. It's a hundred dollars per month. Correct. The month to month fee. Plus the seventy five dollar late fee. Plus the seventy five dollar late fee, which is provided for the lease. Are, are per you month. Section Eight, ma'am? Um, or your honor, may I speak? Uh, Absolutely. To... Go ahead. Okay. So they're charging me the three for the three months of the seven ninety seven. I haven't received a ledger from them plus the hundred dollars late fee. Um, I believe there's a twenty five dollar reoccurring fee, which they usually charge. Maybe it's not on here. It's this not time. on there. Usually it is. Plus the attorney cost. Um, I had a lot of repair, a lot of repair issues with Randolph Court Apartment. Um, I put in my first um, repair issue September 11th. Uh, they did not repair anything in that 30 days. I got a letter from Fair Housing Center said that Randolph Court, Court Apartments Group 5 Management is currently under investigation for um, discriminatory practices against black and brown people who receive a Section 8 voucher. I do receive a Section 8 voucher. Um, I feel in the last four months I have been retaliated against um, due to the fact that there is an ongoing investigation. Um, right now- I have no knowledge of any such investigation. Um, I do have the paperwork to claim everything that- Go I'm ahead, ma'am, with what you were saying. Um, sorry, but I suffer from social anxiety. I'm trying to get this all it's out. okay. Go I'm ahead. Crying. Go ahead. Because it's my heart. So I reached out to Nikki Green. She explained to me they do have an ongoing investigation because they have been withholding maintenance requests. Um, then I contacted RPI management. I spoke with Joy Peterson. Joy Peterson set me up for an inspection. I believe that was, uh, it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Okay. When Eric came out, Rabia asked, Aslam, who was their property manager, refused him entry into my apartment. I contacted Joy. I said, no one came out. This is all in the emails. Um, so I can state this is true. Um, that Rabia said that he could not enter my unit and that they would finish with repairs by December 12th. Um, Hold on a second. You're saying the management company refused entry yes. to your unit? Yes. Go ahead. Um, so that Wednesday, when they refused, I mm. took off work. I had to go to my supervisor. I said, I don't have any more PTO available. I said, but this is very important to me. Can I get the following um, inspection date? It's in here. It's okay. Um, it's okay. I'm, I'm here. Okay. Could I get the following inspection date off? Because I need to be there to let them in. So I was able to let Eric mm. in. Eric explained to me that Rabia had told him that she was not on that email about him coming in to inspect what she was. Um, they came out to that. Well, when he came out to that inspection, it did not pass because of the repairs. Then I reached out to Joy Peterson of RPI management. She said that if it doesn't pass the second time, they will end their contract with um, Randolph Court Apartments. So my voucher is ending in April. Um, I've been with them for five years. I've been verbally and non-verbally harassed by um, maintenance techs. Um, I have been, my person has been incriminated. They have lied saying that I have barred them entry into entering my home to fix any repairs, which is untrue, which has been found through the investigation as being um, not true. During this time, I was taking care of my 25-year-old son who was court ordered under mental health treatment. And he's living in the home and I'm being stressed out. I'm already trying to make sure he stays healthy. Um, he eventually got healthy and now he's on his own. He's working a full-time job. But all of this, you know, and right. they're not doing what's asked. I got you. All right. I'm going to stop you right okay. now, okay? All right. I got, I got a picture of what you're telling me. Okay. Okay. Um, as far I, as I know, Your Honor, the repairs have been completed. Uh, not asking that. Oh. Because there seems to be a lot more going on here. And I'm, I'm a bit concerned that she's 
you know, well, there's a number of concerns, but one of the concerns is, is that she's been there as long as she has, yet her contract with who is her current landlord is now set to expire about three months from now. And I'm a bit concerned as to why that's happening if all these repairs have been done, because certainly had to be typically if the repairs are then completed, that can go right back into effect. So it makes me question as to whether or not the repairs have been done and whether or not there's been a proper inspection. Um, Corinne and I have our maintenance guy uh, here today. According to him, all the required uh, repairs have been made. Blunt. No, and that's fine. I mean, they- And there was an inspection. Saying, but here's the thing. She's saying they haven't been. You're saying that they have been. That's fine. I guess that's why I'm here. So the real issue is, Ms. Kelly, are you going to are you going to get legal representation on this case? That's another thing. Um, I reached out to legal services and they said I make 43% above the federal poverty line. Of course. So you they do. told me to reach out to the state. our association um because they have like a sliding scalpy and i reached out to someone there and they said they don't have any attorneys available and i really would okay. like some type of legal representation okay. well, it's just a lot for me to okay to, hold on a moment can you give me um university of michigan clinic their clinic number <laughs> And I don't know who's overseeing. Is it Ms. Sullen? Is that right? Yes, yeah, Okay. Put her name as well as. Um... Sure. Um, there were a number of numbers that were up on the screen during the presentation. We're going to give you another number to the University of Michigan Clinical Law Program. And get you in and talk to you so you can have some representation. Part of my concern is if there are fair housing issues involved in this, we're going to have some issues. If there are issues regarding repair and then the cessation or termination of her subsidy, we're going to have issues that we have to deal with and we're going to have to sort through. It may very well be, Mr. Weiss, that all of these things aren't connected that something's happening and they're not connected to any of that. I don't know. But she at least preliminarily points out, points to a, points to things that in this court's experience raise huge red flags for me as to what's going on. Uh, can I ask uh, Ms. Kelly a question? You Have can you... ask me a question and then I'll okay. put it to her. Uh, How about that? Uh, I was informed that all the repairs have been made and that there was an inspection that was uh, uh, conducted, although the results are in, in at the end of December. Is that correct, Ms. Kelly? Is that correct, oh. ma'am? Um, there was an inspection on the 27th. My uh, daughter came over at that time. Um, and I have, that was December 27th, and it did not pass because well. Randolph Court came in the same day of that inspection to finish the repairs, but they couldn't pass it because the repairs were not done. So on the 27th, the last time there was an inspection, bottom line is it didn't pass. It didn't pass because they- Okay, I don't I don't need to know why, it just didn't pass. So yeah. we're, we're gonna have, have a problem. That here so too. that's that's okay. Okay. So if it, if it didn't pass, it didn't pass. And that's gonna be a huge problem for the plaintiff if she's in a unit that won't pass and she has a subsidy. Well, if I can have the court ask her what items are still left to be. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. And here's why. Because the inspection is done by basically RPI regarding right. her subsidy. So the landlord, that's one of the reasons they can come by, do the inspection without the tenant being there which she's saying they didn't let him in is because that's part of the contract that Randolph Court 
has with that program. So she might have her complaints and then there's RBI and others that are going to have their complaints. So I don't, and so I'm not going to have her answer that because I don't think it's a fair question given what I'm hearing. Because she could say, I don't really have any issues. That's fine. If she says, I don't have any issues, the problem is if it doesn't pass that inspection, doesn't matter what she thinks. Well, if I can ask the court to ask her, according to the RPI inspection, what items are deficient? You guys, you guys get a copy of that. Did we get a copy of that, Dominique? Yes, you guys get a copy of that inspection. She doesn't need to be questioned as to that. All right. Case is adjourned to when? I'll do it January 19th, because you're coming back anyway, 2024. At 10 o'clock. At 10 a.m. Okay, ma'am? Now. Your Honor. Um, your work. Would you like these forms? Okay. To the courts, because it also has the time that I had to take off work as well. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. I want you to call the clinic. Okay. 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 And see if you can get representation because they'll put that together. For okay. Perfect. If we come here on the 19th and the clinic say they won't represent you, then we'll work through how that's going to be presented to the court and to opposing counsel. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Right. Happy New Year. All right. I think the last time I was here, I was supposed to get a written answer. Did you get that filed? I have um, that available. I went to, uh, to have them review what I prepared for you. They weren't able to get me in. Uh, so this is what I have available today for the written statement. Uh, no. I have the executive summary in one page. Executive, the, executive summary of what? Of the circumstance. You asked for a written statement. I have one. No, no, no. No, no. Okay. What I asked for you to file is a written answer. That's under the court rule. I need to have a written answer to the complaint in a format that the court rule provides, which means... You have to answer the complaint paragraph by paragraph. And you have to lay that out and attach whatever exhibits you are to it. A copy of that answer then has to be provided to plaintiff's counsel. Thank you for educating me on the process. Okay. As I said, I have this prepared. I was going to have it reviewed by Ms. Tanya over at Legal Aid downtown at sea. I saw her on Wednesday. She told me come back on Thursday. I came back on Thursday and they were too busy to take me in. What I have, sir. I, I, okay. All right. All right. I'm sure over the holidays they were busy. Um, Your Honor, as a reminder, this I know, I know the court's hands are tied here. We've This is the third hearing on this file. I've got rent late fees and court costs up to 5,300 at this stage. And as the court may remember this, there was originally a file filed by my, my client in pro per that I had dismissed and refiled to make sure notice was proper. So this has been dragging on for some period of time. No, I know. I, I hear you. Right. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to adjourn this out two weeks. You need to get that corrected. It has to be in proper form for the court. Counsel for the plaintiff needs a copy of whatever you file with the court. Before the next appearance. Well, I want it filed by the 12th. I want it filed within a week. I'm going to adjourn this out two weeks because counsel for the plaintiff is going to have to have an opportunity to look at it, and I'm going to need an opportunity to look at whatever you're filing. Yes, sir. I am not going to take any excuses if it's not here. If it's not here, I'm going to presume there is no answer, and I'm going to issue a default. Because I've given you the second, this is the second time I've given you to go around outside of what happened in the last case. Follow me? I, I Apparently I didn't. My impression was that I was to show up with a written answer and that's what I've done. No, I have your I, written I, answer. Sorry, I, your written answer was due by January 2nd. Where is that listed, sir? I was. On it's right in my file. I wrote the note. I do it all the time. May I have someone point that out to me? I'm... 
Those are my handwritten notes right on the ROA. Written answer, January 2nd, 2024. May I have a copy of that, sir? You can get a copy at the clerk's office. I'm not providing you a copy of anything. I ordered it on the record, and that's when it was supposed to be here. Even if you believe that it was today, that's not an answer, and plaintiff's counsel doesn't have it. I so I'm making it very specific. You will provide a written answer in conformity with the Michigan court rules. You will do that no later than close of business on January 12, 2024. Yes, sir, I will. Your Honor, is the court able to order escrows at this time? I, is continuing to be I, due? I can order escrow. What is the monthly rent? $980, Your Honor. That's disputed, can, Your Honor. Okay, but I'm going to order escrow in that amount. Uh, can you prorate that on a 30 day for me? Yeah. But sir, they didn't, they failed to provide a safe housing. He took, he locked me out. Okay, but listen. Huh? 980. 980. Okay. Well, hold on. 980. What's my prorate for January? Well, it's $33 a day. Okay. If I may, Your Honor. Say what? Escrow is ordered in the amount of eight fifty eight. That's a prorated amount for January, and then in the amount of nine eighty thereafter. That must be paid seven days within the date that rent is ordinarily due. Plaintiffs' counsel will prepare an escrow order for signing by the court. To that effect, yes. The the ledger, the schedule provided by the plaintiff is not. Yeah, compliant. It does not show the total amount, total amount paid per month by who. It is an insufficient form, and I have all that here. I, they, I, I have a response, sir, that I think is relevant to the whether the escrow starts now or in the future, because I have copy. For example, if I just may share this part. The Ypsilanti building inspector came and found twelve violations against them, not against me. The escrow needs to be paid. I will take that into consideration in terms of any counterclaim or other thing that you're filing. But in terms of the escrow, that's what I'm ordering. It. Okay, so Ms. Mills, my caseworker at MISTA, said that she that I applied for state emergency relief help for the eviction when it originally started back in October and was told that the landlord must provide a statement. The statement that they provided to the court wouldn't pass any accounting 101 course, sir. It does not show... The proper for what they needed to provide a statement for what may i hear your question again yes uh, they needed to provide a statement for what what was the purpose of the statement, statement? That about how much rent is owed the the amount that they're claiming the fact that they broke the lease like their response okay they but, sent uh, has a schedule on it sir and it's have you I think the court would find it insufficient. I cannot defend myself against vague allegations and incorrect math. The math ultimately becomes incorrect. That will be straightened out. But right now, I'm ordering escrow in the amount of nine hundred and eighty dollars per month. Prorated amount for January in the amount of eight fifty eight. When you go speak with legal services, certainly they can tell you how to ask this court to reconsider that order. But that's what I'm ordering at this point. Understood. Your Honor, the eight fifty eight. Would you like to do within seven days of the order? Pardon? You would yes, like payment with payment within seven days of the order. What happens when I'm unable to pay because I'm indigent and disabled and fixed income? I cannot pay 980. I never did. I paid half of that with a roommate they allowed to break the lease. What? Okay. Here's, I have everything here, here, but you oh, don't want to see it. Sir, ma'am, that's not what I'm saying. I need it in the form. Oh, you're going to turn your back on me. Yes, sir, because you disrespected me right now. And okay. I'm vulnerable in the court system. All right. Ma'am, first of all, so that the record is clear, I have not disrespected you. In I hear you say the well, things that you said was, I'm ready when you are. 
Ma'am. Ma'am. It doesn't feel good, does it, sir? Ma'am, don't try to play that with me. I deal with that with students all of the time. I sometimes will make a mistake, but you are not going to have me feel guilty because of that. Mm -hmm. So if you mm -hmm. wish, mm -hmm. if, thought, sir. That's if you, you want to make that an issue, then you make that an issue. I that know. is not my true thoughts. January answer by January 12th, 2024. Close of business as indicated on the record. We'll see everybody January 19th. What was the time? 2020. Je Pardon? I didn't hear the time for the 19th, Your Honor. You may have been January 19th at 10 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, folks. How do I what you what do you want a copy of? What you just ordered, what I didn't, what wasn't clear last time. I left here thinking that I'm supposed to come up with a written statement that I've done and you've denied without looking at, right? I just want to know what I'm supposed to do because it is not clear. You have to file an answer. File and when you say file. an answer, it needs to be a specific form. What form number, sir? You have to go and find those. There, you can go to the Supreme Court website. There's a general form of an answer, but I have to have the answer filed in a, in compliance with the Michigan court rules. All right. That's the first thing. And I need that by the 12. You told me that you're in contact with legal services, correct? I met with them once. And okay. This week. Yes, sir. That's right. So what you need to do and what I had indicated is get back to them. They'll be able to assist you to make sure that it's in the proper form. All right. Have attachments to all of those and file that or file that with the court as well as send that to plaintiff's counsel. All right. Yes, sir. Your honor. And then the other thing is I've ordered escrow. Counsel for the plaintiff is going to be preparing that so that that order will be there. You will get a copy of that order. Yes, sir. And that's it. Basically, yet, and then may I have that in writing before I leave? How do I get that in writing? I don't. I have memory issues. I'm disabled, and I've already made the court aware of this. I need it in writing. Counsel for the plaintiff, will you please prepare an order submitted under the seven day rule to the court, please? Yes, Ron. For everything that I ordered, that way there will be written communication. Yes, Ron. Thank you. Not a problem, Ron. Court calls the case of the. I will. Thank you. You're welcome. As do you. Well, I realize it's like, give me five minutes, please. <laughs> Court stands in recess. All right.